Shabbat Shalom. Um, what is a Sabra? Native Israeli, it's a fruit, it's a cactus, hmm? a type, a brand of hummus. It's true, it's definitely a brand of hummus. From Israel. Sabra, it's interesting that no one came up with that name too, was also Sabra and Shatila, they were refugee camps in Lebanon that were attacked by Christian militias while the Israeli army stood by in the, mid, um, in the 1980s. Do any of you remember that? Mm -hmm. um, I share that with you because I want you to be thinking about place and position and perspective tonight. In our Torah portion in Kitavo in Deuteronomy, there is this really amazing ritual that comes up in a few different parshiot and a few different places. Um, in northern Israel, there are two mountains, Ebal and Gerizim. And um, one is on the one side of the valley of Shechem and the other is on the other side of the valley. Um, and if you are in a place where there is not a lot of rain, you'll know that depending on how the winds blow across, one side of the mountain tends to get rain, and then the other doesn't get any rain, right? So the north side of both mountains might have a lot of rain on them, but then the south sides don't. But if you're facing each other, the north side of one is facing the south side of the other, right? Okay? And so these mountains, one of them is lush and verdant. In fact, the water source is the bottom and it feeds the valley, and the other side is rocky and barren. And our people are told to split up into sets of two, six, two groups of six tribes each, and one goes up the green mountain, and one goes up the barren mountain, and the ones on the barren mountain are instructed to call with the curses for the people of Israel if they don't respect and connect with the divine. And the other side is on the verdant side is calling out blessings. This is what's going to happen if we do connect and follow God's path. And it is just, it's an amazing ritual. Um, how many of you have been to a college football game? Okay. Um, many of you know that I will frequently tell you it's great to be a Florida Gator. <laughs> and if you go to um, the the Ben Hill Griffin, if you go to the swamp, one side of the stadium goes orange. Orange. Anybody? Do I really have not a single gator? Come on, Michelle, you gotta help me out. Orange. Orange. 90,000 people. One side screams orange, the other, and it just, you hear the sound going back and forth. And I imagine that's kind of what it feels like on these mountains, that you've got one set of tribes and they're calling out, cursed be Israel, and then you've got blessed be Israel, and they're going back and forth. Remember I said, I want you to be thinking about perspective, about the other side, about giving the benefit of the doubt, about hearing the other one, because it is really really incredible to be thinking that the people on the barren side don't really see the barren mountain, right? They're looking across at the verdant side, at the green side, at the full and lush side, even though they're on that side calling out curses. And the group on the other side, they really don't see the whole picture of green and lush and verdant. All they're seeing is the side of the mountain that is rocky and barren and dry. And there they are calling back and forth to each other. Earlier this week, I came across two completely different articles having to do with Sabra. Some of you are fans of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Some of you are not. Some of you have even said, Rabbi, stop talking about comic books. And that's fair. But in the same breath, 
It's really not about the comics that I share with you tonight because if you know anything about the comic books, you know that Superman is Moses and I would tell you Captain America is a golem, that how many of the comic book characters that we know from Spider-Man to Batman to Superman were created by Jewish writers because they were pushed out of the, of the regular publishing world and they ended up in the comic book world. And so if you have Jewish writers, we're always, Jewish writers always find ways of weaving meaning back into something that does, on the surface of it looks quite different. So I feel like I'm on good uh, footing here to share this image with you, even though it comes from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because wouldn't you know what the MCU shared with, there was a conference and expo earlier this week, and they said, here are some of the new superheroes that are going to be in the next Captain America New World Order movie that's coming out in 2024. And one of them is Sabra, an Israeli superhero, a woman who works for the Mossad and fights against terrorism. Okay, so I've got one person clapping. Ironically, her name is Esther, also a Jewish superhero. She would be Captain America for Israel. Um, the articles I came across, though, were fascinating, especially when you think about Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim, about a rocky, barren place where there are curses and the verdant green and lush where there are blessings. Because one of the articles I saw was on Hey Alma, beautiful. It's a, hey Alma is a wonderful website. Um, that writes about all kinds of Jewish topics. And this was an article talking about how wonderful it was to have an Israeli Jewish female superhero. Yes. <laughs> to have that representation, the whole MCU, all of these movies that have come out over these 12 plus years, I think we're into phase five, and only Moon Knight has been mentioned as being Jewish, and even that was pretty casual. Some of the classic Marvel characters that had been in the comic books Jewish do not appear to be so in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Here is Sabra. She's Israeli. She's female. She's got superpowers. And for this writer, it was amazing to have that sense of connection, representation. And it's something that we, if you experience it, right? I was, was following, I watched European football, European soccer, and Chai Maccabi Haifa was playing this week. I'm sitting there following. I've never watched Maccabi Haifa in my life, but because they're playing international football, I was interested. That kind of representation and that kind of connection is so incredible and powerful. Sabra's a cactus. They're tough on the inside, but sweet on the inside. They're prickly. You have to be careful. It's really good hummus, <laughs> right? Sabra's are wonderful. And yet, there was another article when it appeared on CNN, and it was entitled, Muslims Have Difficulty with the New Israeli Superhero. Oh. Who has difficulty with it? The Muslims. Okay, so the discussion for the folks on Zoom that just broke out is, wait, they have one. They want one too. They, they have one. You're at, all of this is, this is kind of exactly what I'm talking about. First of all, yes, there is actually a Muslim superhero in the MCU. Um, watch Ms. Marvel. It is one of the newest ones that just came out, Kamala Khan. She, her family is from Pakistan. It is an incredible immigrant story. It's an incredible teen story. Um, it's got some funky art. It's the greatest show ever, not the greatest show ever, but it's a pretty good Marvel offer. So there is a Muslim superhero. But the concern was that, first of all, the name Sabra and Mossad, Mossad has done a lot of wonderful things for, for the state of Israel, and yet there's also been violence against the Arab world and the Muslim world and against the Palestinians. If you want to use the name Sabra, well, for in the Muslim world and the Palestinian world, how did they remember the name Sabra? It's not for the prickly cactus and native Israelis, it's for Sabra and Shatiba. 
It's a problematic one, especially when you go back to the 1970s in the original Sabra comic book character and the depictions of the Arabs she was fighting were not really nice depictions, right? There's this concern of, wait, if she's the Israeli superhero, who's she fighting against? And what is that going to send the message to the world? Is that going to send the message to the world that all Muslims are terrorists? Which, by the way, it's not funny. Because there has been real damage done when people say that. I ask you to think about Gerizim and Ebal, about blessings and curses, about one group standing on one side and one group standing on the other, not even being able to fully see themselves and calling out and being able to hear the other one the opposite. That to me, as I watched this whole discourse going back and forth, Concern and celebration and celebration and concern, blessing and curse. How often, as Jews, have we watched where there was a depiction of Jews that we weren't comfortable with? Or how often has there been somebody else that was a depiction of another group that we found concerning or threatening or problematic? We know the world is, black, is not black and white, and I share this with you not because I have an answer, but because I have a challenge for us. That no matter where we stand, whether it's in politics, whether it's in whether you like Marvel superheroes or not, <laughs> where you stand in any of these values, sometimes we're going to be on the Abel side and sometimes we're going to be on the Gerizim side. Sometimes you're going to be on the blessing side, and sometimes you're going to be on the cursing side. The challenge for us as human beings is even as we stand in our place to give the other folks the benefit of the doubt, to be willing to listen, to hear. Because I can assure you, the guys that are saying the blessing, the people that are saying the blessings, don't really want to hear the curses. And the people that are saying the curses are really worried that the blessing guys will, drop, will drown them out so people forget that there really are consequences to negative behavior. Everybody is fighting to be heard, and there has to be that give and take, that realizing that it's not opposite sides of the valley shouting at each other. It's one people separated by space calling out to each other so that each other hears, and they become more than a, two individual sides, but become a whole that is more than the sum of its parts. As we go forward into this new year, as this year of 5,782 comes to an end, I hope as we move forward, our world is polarized. I can't say it enough but we have the opportunity to bring that temperature down, to depolarize it with our interactions with each other by showing that empathy and that compassion, that caring, that pause. It is not absolute. It doesn't mean that the other person is going to do it, but we, we can be that kind of hero. We can be that force of light and love and goodness. I ask you to give pause. Whichever side of the mountain you find yourself on, whether it's a moment of blessing or a moment of cursing and caution, whether it's a place where you feel like you're in a desert or a field place that you feel full of blessing and hope and opportunity, to be in that place, but also to look across the valley and to draw the people on that other side in so that we are more than people going in opposite ways, more than people just shouting at each other, but that we create a whole humanity full of light and love where everybody is seen as made in God's image and everybody is lefted to something high. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.